the Young Fables. And you're watching Lobster and Beer TV. <laughs> okay. Hey, we're the Young Fables. And you are watching Lobster and Beer TV. Hey, we're the Young Fables. And you're watching Lobster and Beer TV. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Lobster and Beer TV. I'm your host, Brian Thompson. Today's guests are a nationally acclaimed Americana duo with one of the most heartbreaking and inspiring stories that we've had on the show before. Rolling Stone refers to them as simple and heartbreakingly direct. That's pretty powerful. Very. For real. Their future documentary, The Fable of a Song, has been circulating film festivals around the country and has received multiple awards. But what I love about them most is their outspoken support for mental health awareness. So ladies and gentlemen, coming to us live from Nashville, Tennessee, with a lobster and a beer, Young, Young Fables! Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Oh, it's so good having you guys, man. I've been a huge fan for a long time. And, uh, what what people don't know is before we even started recording today, we we kind of skipped a step in the process where we already opened our beers and we're enjoying them. We had that but, first run of the Hattie. Hattie. Yeah. yeah. So, so we to let to catch people up, this is the the Hattie beer. It's uh, based off an of NFT called the Hattie Bay Club, and we opened the first ever Hattie. You know the the first ever Hattie beer. Yep. So this is a special moment. Uh, but we we jumped into it way too early. I'm a huge fan of the Young Fables, so. Uh, before we got into the video, we ended up enjoying some beer with. So them let's before. get a cheers though to the young yeah, fables to join to us. Yeah, thank you guys for joining us. We're so happy to have you guys. Yes. Yeah. It's a tasty IPA. It's a damn good one. Oh. oh yeah, hell yeah. Well, yo guys, I'm I'm excited to jump into your story, but before we do that, in front of us we have a lobster roll, and you guys brought a very unique, special ingredient to it today. So tell us about it. I'm super excited to try it. So instead of mayo, we did everything the same. I think we're not really professionals, but <laughs> we we did spinach artichoke dip instead of mayo, which I feel like is is awesome. It was your creation. So. I'm taking full credit. I love it. And then and then Laurel, uh, what's your special ingredient? A <laughs> uh, little bit of dirt. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, look at that! Is that is that a piece of lettuce in the shape of a lobster? Shape of a lobster. It looks like it looks like a Sean White lobster, though. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, let me let me bite into this. See how it tastes. Patrick also made the lettuce lobster, so <laughs> he, we pretty much just showed up today. So <laughs> I love it. It definitely works. Oh wow! Oh, that's, that's unique, super good, that's man. Unique. Yeah. yeah. It takes the place of the mayo, but then it adds a nice flavor to it. Totally different flavor. Yeah. That's impressive. You might be onto something, man. Wes, you could open yeah. up a restaurant in Nashville. I'm starting. We'll hook you up with uh, Get Me Lobster. And you just bring the uh, spinach artichoke. Ooh. <laughs> it sounds. You did toast the bread. Oh, I toasted the bread. Oh, yeah. you toasted the bread. It's vegan butter. <laughs> I love it. That's what we did the same. We use, really? yeah, we use okay. vegan butter. I don't, we don't have regular butter in the house. Well, Brian, like, Brian ran out of yeah, my regular butter. We don't yeah, want to yeah. use well, so. I, you know, 90, 90% vegan. I have to eat lobster for the show. And when I say have to, I guess that I sound extremely privileged there. I'm very grateful that I get to eat lobster. It's, it's a blessing to say it the least. Uh, but guys, so let's dive into it. I'm, I've been a fan for years. I saw you the first time probably at Whiskey Jam in nashville when i was living there that's why shout out whiskey jam shout out ward one of the best music oh, yeah. curators in the game to be honest and biggest heart in the world uh so i saw you guys play there and i took a big liking to you and uh 
And then I recently watched your documentary, which I want to dive into in a little bit. But before that, take us back to when you guys first met and how, how you ended up even come across each other. So I was 18 and I needed a guitar player for a gig because um, my current guitar player that I had at the time did not show up to a rehearsal right before the gig. And my drummer was like, hey, I know this guy named Wes. And I was like, OK, whatever. I'm desperate. I'll do it. And then he shows up and I'm like, oh, God, he's good. So we've been playing together ever since. Ever since. <laughs> and it's funny because. And he's a much better musician than me, but I just didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny too because like right before probably a month or so before i met laurel i i was in china for about half a year playing like jazz and r b and for some reason i i just fell in love with country over there yeah because i've all flowed to the game you know i'm from i'm from tennessee i should know country music but i've always been the step behind yeah, that's, everybody else how did you go from being in tennessee and then going to china and china is the actual place that you fell in love with country music how does that work i think it's just because i, ha I had so much time on my hands because <laughs> like we played, we played every day but we played the same club every day so during the day i just sat around and listened to music and eventually i guess i made it to country and i was like this is pretty cool i love this yeah, yeah. it's kind of bizarre that like wes he has a huge musical background he plays all kinds of different like genres and styles and types of music whatever except for country and then that was like the last kind of yeah. genre that you learned and it was in china isn't that so crazy yeah that's super it's, it's, super it's almost like i wonder if a part of you was homesick uh yeah, you know I was and thinking that, that. Exactly. yeah i was thinking that yeah i never thought that but yeah that could be it where i was like one to yeah one to hear something that's like completely american and then you started like manifesting like your your new life with country music and then you manifested me <laughs> whenever you whenever you start talking you start squinting your, what is it? i squint my <laughs> eyes manifest <laughs> <laughs> damn i gotta do some more manifesting than wes you have it working out for you brother oh yes <laughs> <laughs> when um so you guys did that first gig together and what what happened after that laurel you were like super impressed with his playing and you were like hey let's keep doing this or was there time was there a gap between that you jumped into it where where did it go from there yeah i mean at the time like i said i was doing like full band gigs and i was just technically a solo artist and then wes was just he played guitar in the band for like a year yeah probably about a year and then we played a lot of gigs i mean once i played that one gig we pretty, pretty much, much played i played weekend. in the band from then on yeah so it was a lot of playing together and then i mean we were close friends but we weren't like we were close friends within our band right, so, right. but anyways um i wanted to move to nashville i just turned 19 so it's like a year after i met wes and uh wes told me he came up to me and he was like hey like i'd love to you know drive to nashville and play any shows you want me to play with you anytime i don't care about the money and i'm like Okay. So I was like, whatever. Huh. So I wasn't going to say no because I didn't have to pay him. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and, and Wes, were you just, Wes, were you just like super impressed with her, her songwriting and singing that you were like, hey, I'm, I'm in? What was the love at first sight? And you were just like, yeah, I'm yeah, down yeah, with what it. Was, what was it? Was it the music? Or, be honest. Actually, honesty, it was the music. Because we didn't yes. start dating for about a year and a half after we'd been playing together. But I just felt like, we had something special, you know, and then especially when we started playing just the two of us, I was like, yeah, this, this is something. Cause you know, I've, you know, been a freelance musician for a long time. And there's something, when you see, when you have a connection with people, you, I feel like you got to hold on to that as long as possible. Cause it doesn't always happen. That's very true. Yeah. yeah. Very true. And for those of the listeners that don't understand like collaboration and music, it's, it's very rare to have those magical moments where you, you know, whether it's sitting down on a couch by yourselves and singing a song or jumping on stage and, you know, looking in each other's eyes. And it doesn't matter if you're actually in a romantic relationship or attracted to each other, but it's, you, you have that moment and you just feel that energy. And it's something, it's hard to even put it into words, I feel like, for people who aren't in the music industry. 
what that feels like. Yeah. I feel like it's hard to put into words for people who are. Yeah, like, exactly, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's so weird. Like, there's so many moments, like playing wise, where I can remember them like they're yesterday, you know, and just like a certain solo or a certain song or something. And just like that chemical, whatever it was, just happened. And that was it. You know, maybe the next song was terrible, but, you know, it's <laughs> something something magic you know. and you were saying it's like rare to find that you know yeah. with somebody else especially mm. but it's like i honestly feel like with us it happens a lot yeah exactly. you know it's like so rare to find but then like i guess once you find it maybe it just i don't know but i feel like i've never had that happen anywhere else in my life but like i feel like anytime we played <laughs> like we're on stage or we're making a record or we're like doing our thing or whatever i feel like those moments happen it's funny too because like we could be fighting like cats and dogs <laughs> before we get on that stage that, and we could be fighting after we get on that stage but then like sometimes those are that magic happens then too it's crazy what, it just it kind of like goes whatever we're doing even though we live together and play together and we're in a relationship together and we whatever it's like when we get on stage it's just it's different. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, I, that was one of the questions I was thinking about too. We talked about it a little bit prepping for this this uh, interview. Is you know, I, I can't imagine. I actually I can't imagine because one of the first groups I was in was with my girlfriend at the time, and it was difficult, and it, and it ended up not working out. Uh, and for a, for a you know multitude of reasons. Um, you know, what are, what are, have you guys had any, you know, issues being a couple and also, you know, being musicians, which is a very emotional, you know, investment in your lives, but also it's a business. So it's like, you guys are in depth on multiple layers. Um, are there struggles with it? And if not, you know, what, what do you think are the key components that help you, you know, make it a smooth sale? That's a great question. I'll let you go first. <laughs> I was literally going to say this. <laughs> you have to do the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to talk the trash first? <laughs> right, exactly. Get that out. So I I'll go. Um, I feel like I'm pretty transparent anyway, so I don't know. If I say too much, you can just give me like a look. <laughs> Under the table. I'll check in every now and then. No, I just feel like whenever you're when you combine work and play yeah, or whatever you want to call it, it's like, it, it makes things messy and it's hard to like draw boundaries and lines and it's hard to, it changes the dynamic completely. Yeah. Cause it's like, you could be just for example, like, Oh, we're going to go out to dinner cause it's our seven year anniversary or whatever. And then we go out to dinner and it's supposed to be like, Oh, we're celebrating an anniversary. But the whole time you're like, what's the fourth about, song going to be on pages? You know, like, let's figure this out right now. Like, <laughs> and it's hard to get out of that habit. It, it really is. And then does it cause conflicts? I feel like just that whole dynamic and trying to just, I don't know, make everything like, uh, I don't know, like work life balance. But even though you're doing it with the same person, like that's hard. I feel like it's hard anyway. So it's really hard when your work life is the same. Yeah, it's it's like all combined. Especially like, like I think it would be different if we were like had an accountant firm together or something. You know where it's like we could clock out and yeah, and right, go home and stuff like that, and that would make it easier. But musicians, most most every one of us eats, sleeps, and breathes it. Yeah, you know, those so creative like, moments can come up at any time, and Laurel could be yeah, wanting to watch a movie and chill, and you're like. Hey, no, you got to try this this part right over this guitar. <laughs> it's, it's like you know. Us. <laughs> so weird. I think what does work though is like, and what we've always sort of found with the band, at least, uh, is that it's not two artists who came together; it's a singer and a guitar player. You know, and it's like we've never fought on like hey i want to sing more lead or something like that it's never ever come up and it will never come up uh yeah you're right like we don't yeah. have arguments when it comes to like music like we're always on the same page it's really interesting yeah it's nice you, you stay in your lanes so so yeah. in that aspect we do separate and i just learned something new. that's yeah, yeah. exactly hey we had the <laughs> thanks dr Dr. Hey, cheers, cheers. cheers. <laughs> yeah, <that's> what, yeah. <laughs> By the way, Patrick, this actually isn't an interview. This is this is actually like like a therapist appointment. I'm I'm a licensed. I literally, I literally 
actually was talking when you were talking just now, and I said you can send me an invoice for the second session. <laughs> we're gonna start charging for that <laughs> all right i love it um but not <laughs> well, so though is there anything specific though and maybe not like you said because it's complicated are there any everyday type of things that you guys try to do to you know if there is an issue or there's something going on with the business that you guys try to do to like you know, help your relationship or anything like that That's tough. Right. That is tough. And I would say like full transparency, it just depends on what it is and what kind of day it is. Cause I am all over the place. If you can't already tell that I'm just, woo, you know? <laughs> so sometimes Same. I need space and sometimes I need a hug. So it's like, you just gotta, you gotta be able to read a room. So every day I wake up and I roll the dice. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers. No. <laughs> no, but I feel like if we go on a walk together or just something so like very simple, like if we, we recently live- what we've been doing is at the end of every day, Laurel falls asleep pretty early and I go to sleep very late. But at the end of the day, before Laurel goes to sleep, we sit and we watch Impractical Jokers. <laughs> for like an hour. And it's like no matter what kind of mood you're in, if you're watching that show. You're going to be happy and then right, you're going to exactly. go to sleep. So it's going to work out. Yeah. Oh, I love that. But so if you guys need any more relationship advice, you can email <laughs> us at the. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's that. great. Well, guys, let's, let's hop into the music some more. Um, first off, you got the Rolling Stone shout out. And what stood out uh, from that for me was uh, my Nana, who unfortunately passed away uh, some years ago was my favorite person in the world and she always every time i was at her place in the kitchen she'd always make me a home-cooked meal and while she was cooking she would sing crazy by patsy klein and so when i when i when i heard you guys sing that i it like it hit home so hard (sighs) what what inspired you guys to to do a cover of that or to do your own version of it well i've been singing that song since i was like eight or nine something like that yeah. before i could play guitar and i remember like singing it on my karaoke machine you know for my parents yeah. in the living room. but um i never could play the song so i'd always play it if or i'd always sing it if i had like a full band or someone else to play it just because I don't know, i'm not like i'm not west lunsford guitarist you know so just crushing that crush. more yeah. somebody like me but when i met west i was like hey i really love the song i haven't been able to play it for a while because I can't really play it. Do you know it? And so he just played it. So it was like different than I'd ever heard it before. And I was like, man, this is really special. And then when I heard his version of it, just like on guitar, it made me almost sing it differently, just hearing what he was doing. So I feel like it's a good mix. I don't know. That song really represents like what you do and what I do, you know? Very much. I, I was just about to say that because like to me, not growing up in like listening to country music and stuff. Like to me, when I heard that song, it was straight out of like the great American songbook. It's a, it's a standard. I mean, it's yeah. set up exactly like a standard, like fly me to the moon or any of those. Songs. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, to me, I just played it like I would a standard and, and it felt very natural that way. I mean, Willie talks about it when, like in the song, like that's how he wrote a lot of those songs because he was writing for the songbook. You know? Yeah. Yeah beautiful i mean i I will uh we'll put a link in the bio of uh this video for people to listen to it because it moved me uh, obviously with the the special connection for me but um your vocals laurel are just uh, it's incredible it really is um so let's hop into more in this the songwriting and uh the documentary fable of a song uh patrick your manager sent that to me about four or five months ago and i didn't i like i didn't watch it at first i i sat on it and i finally it dawned on me that i he sent it to me literally like three months after and i didn't even talk to him just one day i, I pressed play on it and i was like oh, i need to check this out and i started watching it and immediately i was drawn into it i have so much to say about it but i also don't want to spoil it at the same time Fair. so maybe we can just take this moment to help build the hype for people around it um your guys's story is so deep so powerful so heartbreaking so inspirational um 
I don't even know what to ask you after saying that. It's like, it, there's so many layers to it, but I mean, how, like what inspired you first to, to make the documentary? Well, it wasn't really supposed to be a documentary at first. It was right. just, uh, we were sitting in this, literally this spot mm. right here where we're, where we're sitting and we had a song right with our friend Dean Fields some weekday morning. And Patrick was like, Hey, do you mind if I come over and film you guys writing a song and we'll make like a, you know, simple YouTube video of your version of the songwriting process and put it online. And real quick, was this the first time he ever asked to film you guys like this during a song, right? Literally, it was time. so random it's so, first time. It's the only time he's ever that's asked. So he, he asked me today when we were getting ready for this, he's like, do you think they like recreated that moment for the documentary? That's so it's so, so cool. To hear that. That's <laughs> wow. Cause I wasn't going to ask that. I didn't want to be disrespectful. <laughs> so that's so off that, that blows my mind. It, it's so in line. I didn't have enough energy to recreate anything in this documentary. So there is no recreating because it's, it's I crazy didn't. though. I mean, it's like, yeah. it is how, crazy. Cause, cause the idea was to do a few of them and hopefully we, I mean, cause okay. Between our second record and pages, we wrote 60 songs which a lot of those you should never hear ever, you know, they should never see the light of day because they're not good. But <laughs> so it's like, we're just taking a gamble on this song. And so we were like, well, we maybe, no maybe if it doesn't turn out good this time, we'll record another one. And it's just like, that was the song. Do you, and, do you, and no idea coming into the right, like what we were going to write about. Not at all. Do you think like, there was some, just, it was a it's like some magical inspiration from a camera being on you that helped like, Oh, I don't, I don't think so. Yeah. Like, I think that made us nervous, more nervous, maybe. Or yeah. then we forgot about it after. Yeah. I think probably the magic behind everything is Patrick Barney. That's really what I think. Because <laughs> yeah. anything he. I'm serious. It's like. He's sitting right over here. That's why she's saying that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's incredible. But that, that, that honestly is a testament to your career so far and what you guys have done and the fact that that. I mean, that's. That's what happens for people who are on your trajectory in any industry, but especially the music industry where the camera just happened to be turned on that day and it happened to capture such an incredible moment that fortunately, but unfortunately, you know, helped paint a picture for the rest of the documentary. Um, and I, I want to dive into that a, a little bit, L Laurel, you, um, you went through some, some serious tragedies in your life. And it was, I, I cried watching the documentary and I don't want to spoil it for people oh, watching. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it messed me up a lot. Um, there was some connections I had in my past that really hit for me. Um, but what I love that you've taken those really low moments in your life and you've been able to flip them into positive vessels to help other people in their lives especially with mental health advocacy. Um, what, what, you know, what are you doing today, you know, when it comes to, to mental health and, um, you know, what, what inspires you to continue to be able to even get back to that place and tell that story? Cause that's really hard to go there. And, you know, so many times over and over. Yeah. Um, I've been saying this a lot lately because I've kind of just figured it out for myself, but I've always felt like I, you know, belonged on stage and that's where I was supposed to be. But um, I always had a hard time, like say I'm playing a 30 minute set or something. And then I have to like talk in between songs. And that used to be really hard for me because I felt like there was no like substance to what I was saying. I was just kind of like, Oh my God look at my new capo okay this song about this boy i just met yesterday like there was like depth i mean really and that's why i was like i just rather not talk you know and i just realized that lately because i'm in a lot of therapy so i'm realizing a lot of things okay yeah, yeah. and when my sister and my dad passed away i mean it didn't happen like overnight but as time went on and we were torn all these places and you know doing these shows where people were actually listening i really learned that like I love sharing my story. Like it's therapeutic for me. I don't, you know, I hope no one thinks that I do it for like attention or anything, but I, I love doing it because I feel like when I open up, other people open up and selfishly that helps me heal, you know? And so I just, I enjoy doing it and it is hard to kind of relive that, 
you know, every, every night I play, but it's more rewarding than it is difficult. So. Yeah. Would you, would you say that it's the, the idea of like you are talking about it? So it, that does bring that therapeutic feeling at the same time, there's the, the opposite side where it's like, you have to be reminded of it. But I think what I've learned through tragedy in my life is talking about it with people has always helped and it's always, you know, yeah. opened it up. But I'm sure there's times probably where you're like, I, I don't really want to dive into this today. Or maybe there isn't. No, there yeah. are many of those times. Yeah. And, and there are times whenever I don't want to dive into it, but I'll still will. Yeah. You do, know? do you feel like a I shift know. recently where it's like you, you understand like when you do dive into it, there's people who hear your story and they've been through that. And now they're looking for that person to connect to that has similar tragedy in their life and you're like oh man of course i'm gonna open up because i you know maybe it's more recent for them and you're like yeah i have yeah. so much to to offer you here and in that moment when you're first like oh i don't really want to talk about this tonight but then you realize man this person i i was in that early stage before and i have an opportunity right now to create a positive moment and help this person like get out of this place i mean exactly yeah and i feel like there's there's not really like an option i know this sounds very dramatic but it's like i can't just step on stage and like sing my songs like even if i personally am like i don't really feel like talking about it tonight it's like i don't have a choice like that is just something that like i need to do i really feel like it's a i mean that's a huge part of my life and i feel like it's a huge part of like my purpose yeah and so i just i don't know i can't imagine like cutting out or shutting out that part of my story or my life or, or my show. I just, I don't know. It's so rewarding. And I really feel like I'm connected to so many more people on like much deeper levels just because of a couple of sentences that I say during the show. Yeah. So super powerful. And we did a show the other day at the Holland theater in Ohio and we played the movie and then we played like a set or we did a set in the middle. And I mean, I think everyone in that theater came up and talked about something that had happened that been in their life or something like that. Like I'm saying everyone, every came, single wow, person, yeah. it was kind of bizarre. Cause you know, you play a show to a thousand people and maybe, you know, 200 people are going to come up to the merch table. It maybe, yeah. you know, and the show it was like, it was a smaller show. It was a smaller show, but every single person. And they waited in line and like, they just needed to get it out and they felt safe in that yeah. particular moment to, to let it out. Yeah. It was, it was amazing. It's crazy how there's beauty in the darkness and <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard to find that sometimes. Um, I, that's so powerful to me. I mean, I, I've been through my own stuff, nothing even, and it's not, you know, obviously for everyone, it, there's no comparison with it, right? Like we all go through dark times and, when I was touring, you know, I, I had certain struggles that I went through and I was honest about it. And there were those moments when I got to talk with people at the merch table and they said, Hey, I used to struggle, you know, with suicide, mental health issues that, that meant the world to me. Like, it was like, wow, like you're, I've created an experience where you're able to come up to me and be honest and open up about it. And at the end of the day, it's like, no matter who you are, what you've been through, you know, what your background is, what you believe in, we're, we're all going through it at the same time. Yeah. And it's universal, the heartache, all of it. Yep. And to, to be able to create, you guys have taken a platform that you've created and you've uh, basically allowed, giving people like a space to, to really talk about stuff, which is so powerful and and it's probably even way beyond what you guys even understand how much it's impacted people's lives which is so beautiful and i've only seen it from the outside watching the documentary following your socials i think it's so powerful if you don't follow the young fables go follow them right now they are uh very inspiring and as, as you know from this this interview right now um, I know you guys don't have that much time left. I want to, I want to talk about new music. What, what, uh, what are we looking forward to right now? And we just released, was it last week? We did the CD release for our third record called pages. pages. Yes. It's been, a, it's been a, 
trip trying to get this thing out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we record or so we're not very good business people. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> because we started recording. We did this with our last record too, but we didn't have things like COVID back then. And um, <laughs> so we started recording before we had the money because we do Kickstarters, right? Mm -hmm. And by the time we were about ready to launch the Kickstarter, like it just wasn't good timing. The, you know, Nashville had been hit by a tornado and we were like, we're not going to ask for money when there's people like that needing money. And then pandemic hit and we're like, we can't ask for money when everybody's, <laughs> you know, suffering. And so it, it took a while to get, get it out and everything. But man, I'm so glad it is finally here and I'm excited about it. So pages yeah. it out is out all platforms, Spotify, iTunes, every wherever people consume music. It's not streaming yet. Right. Okay. It's coming out as singles on streaming. Ah. Yes. Okay. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys are you get, what's that? I was just saying if you if someone really wanted to get the record, I mean you can Oh yeah, you can get it from our site, you can get it at a show, you can get it yeah. at, all that kind of stuff. I love that. Is there a reason you did that before you start streaming it? Just to stretch it out, you should tell the story about after our second record. Oh yeah, um, we <laughs> released old songs, and it was like it was like a big deal for us. You know, mm -hmm. we spent a lot of money, more money than we ever had on anything. Cool. You know, yeah. and we just we did the whole thing, and we we're proud of it. We're like, oh, it's gonna last forever. You know, <laughs> and I remember the next day, someone came up to me. And they were like, oh my gosh, I love your new CD. When are you going to release new music? And I was like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it just broke my heart. So I don't really know the reasoning why people do the singles and stuff. I know that's some kind of industry thing, but honestly, it just makes me feel better. Just let, let that. Yeah, let it, it stretch a little bit. Yeah. Years and years. I <laughs> <laughs> love it. <laughs> and are you drawing uh, so this was kind of part of you know you drew and throughout you've drawn through so much uh of your own personal life in your music um especially through daddy's girl and stuff and sharing that are we gonna see is there a, some more drawing into is there a lot of drawing into your own personal stories in this type in this one coming out or what's the kind of the feel of it yeah i feel like oh, yeah. everything we do is very personal yeah or, me at least even yeah, if we're you know, not writing yeah. about your stuff we're all right about my stuff and this one it was it was a what's cool about this record is that we wanted it like i said before we had written 60 songs between so we had a lot to choose from yeah but we wanted to not just we wanted it to address the topics that we needed it to address mm -hmm. but also not feel like this is one song 10 times or 11 times or whatever yeah. you know like so it's it that's why we called it pages it's like the different pages of your life as you go you know and there's you should talk about it. there's three songs on there that had to be on there yeah and, like we went into the studio and you know when you go in and make a record and there are a bunch of people involved there's a bunch of opinions and you know someone has their favorite song and then someone else has their favorite song and i was like well i know everyone's gonna have their favorite songs or songs that they want on the record but you know, there's three songs that have to be on the record. Like those were non-negotiables. Right. <laughs> and it was a song that we wrote for my sister, one that we wrote for my dad. And then one that we wrote that kind of summed up the way that I felt about losing the both of them. Yeah. So, and the, in that order, just kind of start right in the middle of the record. Right. Yeah. That's how I'm excited. Yeah, definitely. Those are heavy songs, I would say, but you know, three songs on an 11 song record. I'm like, that's really all I, all I needed. That's all the space I needed. So yeah. I said what I needed to say. How's the process usually work? Like, is it like a melody and idea that you have, or does it come from a guitar riff that Wes has? Obviously it's not always the same, but what, what would you say? Like a lot of the ideas, how, how are those birthed? It's really different. That's why we wanted, like, I thought it was a great idea to record it because it's like, it's different every time, you know, yeah. or to film because you never know. Like sometimes, sometimes like I say most of the time you have an idea. Right? Like I'll have like some kind of melody that I'll throw chords to, and then maybe like, yeah, lyric ideas. Then I bring it to Wes and he's like, what about this? Yeah. This? <laughs> 
Oh, wow. It's amazing now. So. <laughs> it's funny, too, because a lot of people assume that I come up with the music and Laurel comes up with the words. It's kind of the it's opposite. Just, well, not even that. I mean, sometimes. Yeah. But it's just like a mishmash. I'll, I'll be like, let's play this chord. She's like, that's terrible. Let's do this. And I'll be like, that word is awful. Let's do this <laughs> word. <laughs> I'll wear the highway list. I'll wear the highway list. <laughs> I, always, I think my, so I love Randy Newman. And Randy talks about when he wrote a song for his ex wife, how much he missed her while he was married to his current wife. <laughs> and he, and, and they're like, How's your current wife say, think about this? And he's like, I don't care. I just write songs, whatever, however I want to write. I love and that's how we write. I mean, honest there's song. been times when like we're writing and it gets harsh, you know, like, one oh. time Laurel was like crying. We're still writing the song. Oh, know? we had a co-write with this girl. Um, me and Wes were into it or something. It wasn't just like a bigger <laughs> fight. You know, I mean, we've been together for almost what? How many years? Seven. Seven oh, years. Wow, it's been, been a, yeah. a minute. And so we've been through some stuff together and we were sitting there and it wasn't like a petty fight. I mean, it was like a, yeah, it was one of those deep, deep fights. <laughs> and, and so I'm the kind of person I write what I feel like that's usually, and Wes is always just down for whatever. And we had a co-write and the song came up and it was, it was too, it started to be too good to just stop writing it. And I was like, all right, I'll push through and write this thing. And then I couldn't handle it. And the girl sitting across from me and I get up and I start crying. I was like, God, excuse me for a second. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously. So we came back and finished the song. Yeah, we did. Uh-huh. We've never played it, but it is a damn good song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we're learning. We're learning a lot about the dynamic tonight. Definitely. This is great. <laughs> Again, like the, the bird's eye view that people probably don't usually get to see. This is good. No, we're gonna have don't. to like cut this up in little clips. Like, did you know the young people? <laughs> this is the dynamic when it comes to songwriting. <laughs> uh oh. Please. Uh oh. It's like TMZ. <laughs> yeah, right. We we pride ourselves on not being that at all. But you started giving the juicy stuff, and I figured I'd just keep feeding it. West kept <laughs> now and then. West is like, and did you know? This? <laughs> it's great. Well, guys, we. Truly appreciate you taking the time to come on the show. Like I said, we're big fans. Um, before we finish up, uh, the big question we always ask people that come on the show, if there was an autobiography written about the young fables today, what would the title be? <laughs> well, if it's, uh, They tried their best, the young <laughs> Oh no. I can I bet I bet Patrick's in the background just like, no, no. <laughs> By the way, we'll cut we'll cut we'll cut all this fat out if you want us to. And you can come up with it. I love it. Yeah, they tried their best. It makes it way more like, you know, that's the real. I love it. I love it. Oh man. Well guys, the young fables, we appreciate you so much for coming on the show. Um, cheers to you guys. Cheers. cheers. Yes. Thank you. Uh, the new album pages go, go to the, what's the website? The young fables.com. The young All right. We'll put it in the link below. I'll put it in the, the caption here. The young fables.com. Thank you so much for joining us on lobster and beer TV. We'll see you next time. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Patrick, we love you. Peace. Peace. Hey, guys. I know we got kicked out of the bar. They called last call, but we're back. And I just want to let you know we appreciate you guys so much. Our fan base means everything to us. So if you can, hit the like button. Subscribe right here. And hit us up on Instagram, socials, everything. Lobster and Beer TV. We love you. We will see you on the next episode. Peace.